So what I would really like to do is to consider um, and explore intermediality within art installations with a filmic element um, to expand the inner workings of effect and to generate a web of correspondences between a selection of those installations that I encountered in situ. Um, in his writing on Spinoza, Gilles Deleuze likens effects to durations that you experience from one state, quote, from one state to another, from one image or idea to another, there are transitions, passages that are experienced, durations through which we pass to a greater or lesser perfection. These continual durations or variations of perfections are called affects or feelings, affectus, unquote. The selected exhibitions have different sociocultural motivations ranging from geopolitical situations of conflict and related child poverty, feminist critiques of patriarchal structures, the body as personal, gendered and cultural place, political activism relating to anti-democratic aggression and post-colonial critiques of racist and socio-political oppression. Whilst these concerns are prominent within various contemporary art forms, Intermediate strategies offer particular opportunities as they facilitate the workings of effects through layering, condensing, and stretching distinct signifiers across media. This creates an elasticity within effective pathways through spatial extension whilst allowing for gaps between visual modes. Though affect goes beyond images and ideas, as Deleuze explains in his reading of Spinoza, but it, that is effect, is not, confi uh, quote, is not confined to the image or idea. It is of another nature, being purely transitive and not indicative or representative, since it is experienced in a lived duration that involves the difference between two states. This is why Spinoza shows that the effect is not a comparison of ideas and thereby rejects any intellectualist interpretation, unquote. The individual case studies will reflect on these modalities, with Heidi Bucher's practice as indicative example involving performance and its filmic documentation, sculpture and architecture. The installation facilitates a deterritorialization of visual signifiers as they're not bound within a particular visual mode. As such, they could be seen in the context of Rosalind Krauss's post-medium condition, acquiring new meanings in conjunction with other visual modes. One could mention here also Deridian difference that is the continuous slippage of the signified, as signifiers enter into different visual constellations. The implication of effect within visual art has often been discussed in relation to Deleuze and Guattari's concept of percept, effect, and ideas of deterritorialization. Quote, art undoes the triple organization of perceptions, affections, and opinions to substitute it with a monument composed of percepts, affects, and blocks of sensation, which take the place of language. The effective potential of art installations is often supported by multi-sensory presentations that can be walked through or otherwise experienced in physical encounters with the work, allowing for a differentiated and complex interaction of percept and affect. Now, uh, again, I quote from Deleuze and Guattari, affect Spinoza's affectus is an ability to affect and being affected. It is a pre-personal intensity, corresponding to the passage from one experiential state of the body to another, and implying an augmentation or diminution in that body's capacity to act. An important aspect within the experience of installations is the notion of embodied spectatorship. And the viewer's direct physical encounter whilst moving through their spatial setup Laura Marx reminds us that the understanding of haptic visuality refers to a phenomenological understanding of embodied spectatorship. Intermediate installations can enhance affect through a spacing of information, where Raymond Belour's Entre Image comes to play. Quote, the spectator at an installation is a flaneur, or the more aware of the passageways between images, um, as his own body sometimes passes into the image and circulates between the images. This allows the viewer to pause, to step outside of a particular viewing mode and to become aware of a multi-layered scenario. The latter has its own duration or durée 
involving the entirety of the different spatiotemporal modes, including the viewer's own time of viewing. Ronald Bogue elaborates on the Bergsonian notion of durée within Deleuze's theorization of cinema as, quote, Deleuze distinguishes between closed sets and the open whole, noticing that matter naturally tends to form isolable systems, yet without completely severing connections to the whole durée. Now, I also wanted to mention that um, you know, Deleuze's concept of the encountered sign, as Jill Bennett reminds us, can be engaging at every level, emotionally, psychologically, sensorially. And Anis Peto writes on the effective implications of intermediality in general, and in film in particular, quote, the inter indicating that thinking of theorizing is focused on relationships rather than structures, on something that happens in between media, rather than, sim uh, than simply exists within a given signification, has proved to be a key element of the term. Now, the relation a relational aspect of intermediality can be traced within each of the four case studies. So here I've just sort of mashed them up. They're not in that order that I will present them. Uh, but here we have uh, Heidi Bucher's exhibition at Haus der Kunst, Metamorphosis, uh, then Francis Alice's presentation at the Venice Biennale, The Nature of the Game, and Alfredo Jarre's installation, 6.01.2020.18.39, presented at the Whitney Biennale, 22, and Candice Williams's multi-channel video installation, Death of A, also presented at the Whitney Biennale. Now, Francis Alice, in his installation, gives us an example of duration as multiplicity, with its video projection on multiple screens and series of small-scale paintings. Whilst the viewer is immersed within the central installation of large screens showing children a play in different locations across the globe, these impressions are informed by the visual lightness, yet conceptual gravitas, of miniature paintings in a side room. The films involve an indexical relation with place, and now children engage with a location, whereas the paintings tap into cultural conventions of painterly molds and draw strength from their iconic presence. The paintings are installed on light pink walls, accentuating the transcription of observations into iconic objects within a subdued color palette, which feels like an underbelly to the bright light and vibrant colors within the films, which are shown in a darkened space. Christina Ljungberg's comments on Pierce's semiotic system elucidate the implications of difference or overlapping systems within Alice's installations. Quote, in Piercean semiotics, a sign is itself a medium since it dialogically interacts in its various modes, the iconic, the indexical, and the symbolic. In an ongoing flow of signs mediating between the life world we live in and our interpretation of it, unquote. And Simon O'Sullivan, however, reminds us in his reading of Deleuze and Guattari, that affects operate beyond structural modes of interpretation and meaning as such, um, but are on a different asignifying register. The latter advocates a post-structural reading of these intermediate installations, where Derrida's ideas of difference and the spacing between signifiers allows us to think affect as that which is ever evolving within the spatial-temporal parameters of the installations discussed here. So Sabine Fogel also suggests about this installation that the paintings remind us of the locations of violence, poverty and war, where most of the children's games are filmed. The latter show a, quote, peril world, repetitive, free, perhaps unproductive, but creative, innocent, cheerful, unquote. Through this contrast of places of conflict depicted in the paintings with the serenity of the filmic works, the viewer experiences a heightened awareness of human inventiveness, resilience, and playfulness within difficult conditions. Now I'm switching, and these examples, they are of a very different nature, but I'm, it's just sort of to highlight some aspects of effect. And here, Heidi Bucher's installation at Haus der Kunst was curated by Jana Baumann and Luisa Seib. Baumann highlights Bucher's instrumentalization of the body as vehicle for effect. 
And, uh, you know, like there were lots of different media in that exhibition. I would like to focus on the large scale sculptural work and on the, the juxtaposition of those sculptures with filmic material, documenting the artist at work. Buche's spectacular sculptures are literal memories of place. Their juxtaposition with films documenting her performative processes as she skins historical and personal architectural interiors creates an immensely effective correlation of different haptic realities. Jana Baumann explains that Bucher's work is focused on process and has an interdisciplinary approach to art, which had previously not been recognized to this extent. Bucher had all her skinnings of spaces filmed. Um, and through her writings, we know that she would have wanted these filmic documentations to be shown next to the sculptural outcomes. And uh, Bucher's three-dimensional works, they, they really exemplify Rosalind Krauss's idea of sculpture in the expanded field, as I refer to sculpture, to architecture, and now also a form of spatial drawing. Um, the juxtaposition of the film material with the large sculptures, um, they are sometimes in different spaces, they activate a spatial temporal gap within the viewer's perception, linking in their mind's eye the actual presence of the skins as sculptural representations of the now virtual original space with a recorded virtual reminder of the actual rooms and the artist immersed in a deeply cathartic process of skinning their surface coverings which piled up on the floor or which Bucher wrapped around her body. The performative aspect of Bucher's work can be seen with the historical context of feminist performance art, though clearly it also resonates with a contemporary focus on effect. Uh, performances are mesmerizing and equally disturbing in their compulsive dedication, amplified by the sound of the latex skins as the material resists its pulling off from the walls, and you can hear this very well in the filmic material. Jill Bennett explores how artworks can move beyond the mere representation of trauma and effects and can take an active role in, quote, engendering new languages of trauma that proceed from lived experience, unquote. Bucher created new places from skinning architectural sites, considering gendered space and social structures within these architectural settings, such as her family house, a prison, a grand hotel, and the famous psychiatric clinic Dr. Binswanger's Bellevue Sanatorium on Lake Constance. There's more to say about that, but for brevity, I leave it here. Um, and then I wanted to mention Candice Williams' Death of A. It's a four-channel video installation that lasts just over 26 minutes. It riffs on Arthur Miller's highly acclaimed play, Death of a Salesman, by using some of its lines collaged with various other texts by Albert Einstein, Sadia Hartmann, and Yvonne Reiner, amongst others. The traveling salesman, Willie Lohman, is at the center of Miller's renowned play, of existential drama of individual and projected projected family hopes, illusions, and shattered dreams within post-Second World War American capitalist society. Williams's installation brings this scenario into a black context, where the character of Willie Lohman enacts the collage text contrasted with the expressive quality of filmed dance reflecting the political and cultural dimension of the black body. Miller's play has a non-linear take on time, which is one of its extraordinary features. Death of A is not a black version of Death of a Sailman salesman, but uses the, quote, the structure of two monologues and a requiem, that's from the Whitney website, of the letter for its own purposes. It instrumentalizes intermediality through exploring relations between different disciplines and visual genres to reflect on the black body as, quote, site of experience and politicized symbol. Death of A takes influence from Miller's text and creates new associations through the use of intermediate and gaps between signifiers, verbal and visual. Williams makes this into a rap, tapping into black cultural tropes whilst it drifts on Miller's play and its existential anxiety of identity, conformism and society's expectations. In terms of percept, it juxtaposes performativity with technology, offering a contemporary lens with a focus on black culture through a black gaze, with a deep undertone through text, dance, and historic imagery, where the workings of effect take hold and extend the existential angst of Miller's play within a post-colonial, post-digital cultural context. 
And now I'm coming to my last example, Alfredo Jars 0601 2020 1839, which is, it happened, you know, like it's in, in response to a demonstration. The demonstration happened in the aftermath of, George, uh, uh, of the death of George Floyd. Um, and then there were, uh, you know, demonstrations everywhere against political violence and systemic racism all over the US and further afield. And then there was a demonstration on 1st of June 2022 in Washington's Lafayette Square in the vicinity of the White House. Uh, it had started peacefully but was met with violent and aggressive actions by the US National Guard against the demonstrators, Climans, climaxing in the hovering of helicopters at extremely low heights, which caused dangerous, life-threatening high winds. Ja watched the televised event, live event, and was horrified to see the helicopters reminding him of experiencing Pinochet's regime in his native Chile. <coughs> Quote, I watched with horror the arrival of the helicopters. That is when I realized that I was watching fascism. Fascism had arrived in the USA. Unquote. The installation is multisensorial, involves visual, tactile and sonic elements. The stark and grainy and white, uh, black and white documentary footage has a visual hapticity <coughs> whilst the viewer is physically struck by the noise and force of a wind machine. And I have to say also viewers had to wait, they could only enter the room at specific times at the beginning and the doors were closed and they couldn't exit before they were opened again. Um, okay, so JAR aims to generate effect by creating a place within a black box scenario that conveys the sense of physical danger and angst of the actual historical event. It is worth remembering that Jar was not physically there. He did not experience the event in situ. He did not feel the high winds of the helicopter. And yet, through the juxtaposition of live television footage and recollection of lived experience, that is of Pinochet's fascist Chile, he was affected. The event caused effect. His installation at the Whitney Biennale relies on intermediate strategies to convey a coming together of distance and proximity. Through the use of the helicopter sound and wind, we experience the footage as being catapulted into the present of our embodied experience, whilst we are conscious of the artifact. And one could debate here if this was very much, again, within that sense of the intermediate art installation as sensation and where that fine line is. And some critics have mentioned this in their comments about this piece. Now, I wanted to conclude uh, on the place of effect. The art installations discussed in this paper are examples of recent presentations. They were all exhibited in the period of the early 2020s. During the global event of COVID, we have acquired an increased awareness of how actual physical presence and its virtual reflection play off each other, recalling Deleuze's crystal image. Actual might refer here to the presence of a computer screen and the filmic material on the screen. During lockdown, the screen reality had often become our actual reality. The virtual could be the memory of haptic analog experience, which was not available to the same extent during times of lockdown. Brian Masumi reflects on the relations um, between actual and virtual within the dynamics of effect. Quote, effects are virtual synesthetic perspectives anchored in functionally limited by the actually existing, particular things that embody them. The autonomy effect, effect is its participation in the virtual. Its autonomy is its openness. Now, a particular quality of the discussed works is their ability, each in their own way, to make the viewer aware of an oscillation within perceptions of place. And to conclude, I just wanted to say there is a renewed interest in direct physical experience, which is an essential aspect of intermediate art installations. And one could argue that Bellus, Bellus Entrimage is as important as ever, where the spatial parameters of art installations can be set up to facilitate how percept and affect are mediated within different blocks of sensation. Simon O'Sullivan reminds us that affect, as Spinoza understood it, indicates possibilities. Affect involves movement, brings about changes within the realm of becoming. And I think intermediate art installations are a good place to generate this momentum. Thank you.